Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss automated reporting with Snowflake, Amazon S3 and SES, AWS, Lambda, etc. Okay. So let us try to understand the business requirement first. That is, suppose we are having a Snowflake table and you are having a query which can give some business insights. Okay. What you have to do? Based on certain time interval, maybe daily at EOD time or maybe weekly or monthly, you have to execute that particular SQL query and the result set you have to send via mail to the destination email address. In that kind of requirement, you can use this particular pipeline. All you can do is you can create a snowflake task using which you can schedule that SQL query. The result set you can unload in an S3 external stage and from there you can configure lambda trigger that as soon as the result set of that Snowflake SQL query will be dumped in an S3 file, the Lambda will be triggered and using simple email service, we'll send that email with the attachment where the result set of that query will be stored and business team can get the data or the report in automated manner. Okay, right? So I hope you understood this particular pipeline. In several business contexts, you can use this. Now, without any further delay, let us try to implement the same. Okay? So here what I will do, I will first go to my AWS management console and I will open S3 in a new tab. Now here you can see, here we are having our S3 bucket already created. We are going to create our Snowflake external stage pointing to this particular bucket. Okay. Now to use Amazon simple email service, the email addresses need to be verified if you are in sandbox account. Right. So here if you check. SES, I have already verified one email address and that one only I'll be using for sending and receiving purpose. Okay. So here, if you see that verified identity, if you go here, one dummy email address I have created, I will use for sending and receiving the reports. What our snowflake will be sending us in automated manner. Okay. Right. So this step is also done. Now we will create our AWS Lambda function. So here in notepad, I have pasted that Lambda function. It is a very simple Lambda. We are inputting all the necessary modules and then first we are creating Boto3 client for our AWS S3. We are reading the S3 data. We are downloading in a temporary file. We are configuring the sender, mail ID, recipient mail ID, region name, subject and all these things. And then eventually using Boto3 client for Amazon SES, which we are basically creating here. Using that, we are sending that to the target mail address. Okay, right. And here I have used a single target mail address. You can use multiple one provided those are verified mail address. Okay, right. So here what I will do, I will quickly create the Lambda function and the code I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section also, which you can take from there and parallelly practice. Okay. So here I will go to create function, send email yt snowflake automation right and then here runtime we can configure as python 3.8 and then we can create the function so here i can override this particular function and deploy it it is deployed i will add the s3 trigger but before adding the trigger i need to make sure that the permitted roles are available so I'll go to configuration, I'll go to permission, I'll add the necessary roles. So here this lambda will be triggered from Amazon S3 and it will use Amazon ECS to send the mail. So Amazon S3 access as well as ECS access, both should be available for this lambda. So I'll attach the policy. So Amazon S3 full access and Amazon ECS access. Both I have kept at the permission. So permissions are added. Now I can go to this lambda and add trigger for our S3. Okay. So this is our bucket. All object create event that is fine. And I will create this. I will acknowledge this and add this. So it is overlapping. Let me make sure in S3 here not more than one event is available so here already one event is available i will just delete that is deleted now i can add this so here our s3 trigger for lambda is created 
So as soon as Snowflake will unload the file in S3, the Lambda can trigger and send the email to Amazon SES. Okay, right. So that is done. Now we will go to Snowflake and configure the external stage and all these things. Okay. So here if you observe, first we are creating a fresh database Ramu. If it exists, we are dropping that and then creating it. So here this statement executed successfully. Now what we want to do basically in this particular case, if you observe that when we discussed the use case, I told you that maybe there is a particular business requirement for which you have written an SQL query and that SQL query desert set suppose you are sending using Amazon SES. Okay, that particular use case I discussed. And now what use case I am going to show you the demo is related to Snowflake task failure. Okay. That is, suppose you are having multiple tasks for different SQL query automation in Snowflake. Now, whenever a task fails, you want to send notification using this particular pipeline. So, for that, what I am doing? First, I am creating a table and then here I am creating a task test1yt. What we are doing here basically, we are scheduling the task with one minute interval. We are inserting in this particular table whatever we have created. There, we are just inserting the current timestamp. Okay. And in this table, the name column has a default value demo YouTube, so that only will be interesting. And the ID value is auto incremented, so it is like acting like a sequence. Okay, so three column table ID will be auto incrementing sequence, name will be always demo YouTube by default, and create date will be continuously changing. We will insert the current timestamp. Okay, so here we have created the table. Let me just execute both queries to make sure I have not missed anything. So here it is done. Now here what we are doing, we are similarly creating another table and we have created another task which is doing the same kind of activity that inserting the current timestamp in the created date column. Okay. So here both are done. Now here if I execute show task, you will see that these are the two tasks what it is showing. Test 1 yt, test 2 yt. But just now we created. Okay. Now we will resume the task. Then it will start executing. So with each one minute interval. In the table video demo 1 and video demo 2, the data will be continuously inserted. Okay. So here, if I resume, then the operation will start in each one minute interval, it will do. And in task history, we can basically query. So here, the task name is task 1 yt and task 2 yt. These are in capital letter in information schema, whatever will be available. Okay. Right. So let me first show you that video demo 1 as well as our video demo 2 both are empty okay now we are resuming the task right so the task are resumed now let's see the status information schema task history we can query with these two task name so here's the query id is initially now which is obvious because just now we resume these two tasks so they are not executed till now once so query id we are getting null as soon as they will be getting executed we will see non-null query ID, right? So let's wait for a couple of seconds. We will observe soon. And then what we are doing here, we are creating an external stage pointing to our S3 bucket where data will be dumped. That is basically this particular bucket name ID setup. So there we want to dump the data. So here I am creating a external stage pointing to that location. Okay. If I execute the list comment as of now, here you will see no data is there in that external stage. Now here what I am doing, I am creating another task and the task name is send task failed report yt. What it will do with each three minute interval it will execute and it will basically execute this particular query. What it is doing? It is querying information schema task history that particular metadata table and it will check whether any state for a particular task is failed or not. If it is failed, it will unload that particular data using copy into command. Okay. Now, in each three minute interval, we are executing this task. So to check the failure status for a particular task, we are just checking only past three minute data. And how we are checking that? That completed time in this information schema task history, there we are just checking within last three minute interval, any task got failed or not. If they are failed, then only data we are unloading else not. Okay. So that way with each three minute interval, this particular task will be executed. It will check for the past three minutes from the current timestamp whether any task is in failed state or not. If it is there, it is dumping the data in that external stage in CSV file format. Okay. So this is this stage we have 
created already and the task also we have created and now we are resuming this particular task also okay so this will do its monitoring in the back end so as of now let's see what is the status in information schema task history if you observe here for task 1 yt and task 2 yt both started running so we are getting non null query id so if i just to select start from video demo yt1 here also we are getting two data and here if i do select start from video demo yt2 here also we are getting two data that means both tasks got executed two two times okay now what we will do to generate the failure in this task we will drop the table okay and then eventually what will happen when the next time the task will try to execute the insert query in this table it will not able to find out this particular table and the task will fail when the task will fail this particular task which is basically acting as a monitor for our all other tasks this will note that and this will dump a new file in this external stage which is currently empty and then and there we will receive a mail as of now if you see mail section mail section is also completely empty even if you check the spam box that is also empty right so till now everything is going fine now what we will do if you just observe current query in the information schema task history if you check that state equal to failed any data is there or not you will see nothing because till now all the task got successfully executed now let's do one thing let's intentionally drop a table video demo 1 and in this video demo 1 what this task was actually doing if you see the first task this was inserting the data so once we drop the table it will not able to find it will fail and next time after 3 minutes when this task will be executed it will catch that and it will send a mail as simple as that okay so here we will drop this particular table right so here see video demo 1 successfully dropped now if i do select start from video demo 1 you will see that it will display that table does not exist now soon we will receive a mail in this particular mailbox because that monitor task will understand that one task got failed if you check the information schema task history now it will start showing that some task will start failing let's wait for one minute you will see that and make sure this particular task is in resume state which is basically parent task so here let me execute this particular one again till now no data is there that means this particular task after failure is not executed once let's see okay so actually this one should be in caps so let me just update the names sorry this should be in capital letters so here let me just test it out so here see it displayed that test one yt failed and what is the failed reason here it is showing that sql compilation error this table does not exist or not authorized okay so the task failed now let's see whether our this particular parent task got executed or not so here i can execute with lower command to make sure everything works fine and the task name is this one let's execute so here if you see that this task got executed once okay right so any data got unloaded or not let's see so not yet any data has not unloaded yet the reason being when this particular task got executed that was little bit before than the task one failure okay in the next iteration we should see so here if you observe currently the task one yt again failed now in the next run for this particular task we should receive that in the unloaded data so here let it execute one more time so here see this particular task got executed again and because our task 1 was continuously failing that is test 1 yt if you check the failed status it was continuously failing so ideally one file should have been dropped let's see see failed task this is the csv file name this got dropped as soon as snowflake task has dropped that particular data or unloaded that data in s3 from the lambda got triggered if you go to monitor section and if you go to cloudwatch logs here you will see that it got triggered at 7:31 pm now it is 7:32 and we should be receiving a mail also 
let's see the inbox let's refresh or maybe we can check the spam box also so let me check whether any error occurred or not so no error occurred here let's see. so here see in spam box just now a mail received email from s3 and here you see 1934 if you just click on that here a report it is clearly showing about the failed task okay if i just click on show in folder here you will observe that team failed task if you just click on that here you will observe all the tasks failed okay So see here the timing when the task failed and the database name which task failed what is the error reason all things it is showing okay right and this way you can do the experiment with the other task also you can just intentionally drop the table which the task is loading the data and then check whether the automatic report is coming or not okay that way this one just i have shown you one example with the snowflake task automated report generation Similarly, you can generate the reports for monthly basis or any other activity for business requirement. Just here, while creating the report for task, you have to wisely configure this thing. That here, the monitor task, we are scheduling with 3 minute interval. So, whenever it will run, then from that particular current timestamp, for the past 3 minute window, whatever task failed, it is capturing. So, that way, all the failure messages will be going. Okay. So if you see the completed time for that failed task should be the current timestamp minus 3 minute to the current timestamp current minute. Okay, like that I have clicked. Hope you can easily understand this particular unload command. So this is all for my this video. I will be providing all the codes in the description box or in the comment section. Parallelly practice this, you will get more feeling out of it. This is a very interesting pattern and you can use this in multiple automations related to Snowflake and AWS. So if you find this video helpful then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.